All right, so let's just get started and then um, so I don't want to keep you guys here all day. Uh, I just wanted to say that um, Patrick Morales from our Oakland office, he is our go-to guy for a commercial. And I know I was at one of the meetings that he did the introduction to a commercial real estate and it was amazing. And I thought this would be a great opportunity for anyone that's interested in learning more about commercial. And without further ado, Patrick, thank you so much for doing this for us today. And the floor is yours. Um, Marnelli, can you please make him the host in case he needs to share his screen? Um, I already made sure. Perfect. Patrick? Thanks, Marnelli. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Edona. I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully this is a little bit of an enlightenment for some people, maybe a refresher for some others. So without further ado, like Edona said, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. All right, you guys can see my screen? Yeah. Thank you. All right, guys. So today we're going to be going over the basics of commercial real estate. Um, my name is Patrick Varelis. I'm the broker manager over at the Oakland office on the Chopper Russo team. Um, so first things first, I just wanted to give everybody a brief refresher on, on uh, this regarding the code of ethics, because this was said to me when I first started in the business, and I think this still holds true today. This is from Article 11 in the Code of Ethics. You don't have to read the whole thing, but essentially what it says is that you have to have, you have to be competent in the asset type that you're going to be listing or selling. You have to have some kind of experience, or you have to have somebody in your office that has some kind of experience in order to take that listing on. And then if you're not special, if you're not competent enough to take that type of a listing, then you should bring someone else in with you or you should refer it. So just remember that this is part of the code of ethics. Um, and maybe it's your first time going to a commercial listing appointment. That might be something worth discussing with, with the property owner and say, you know, I haven't sold many commercial properties, but my brokerage has, or my team has, or my manager has. Um, so as you know, there's always, there's, uh, as a Remax Select as a company, we sell everything. We sell houses, we sell businesses, we do rentals, and we do commercial real estate. So this is in the code of ethics, all right? So just basic, what is CRE? Uh, CRE is the acronym for commercial real estate. It refers to properties used for business purposes, like offices, medical offices, Retail spaces, industrial warehouses, multifamily housing, uh, specialty properties, and as well as investment opportunities with the potential for rental income, appreciation, as well as tax benefits and write-offs. Just a little back of the napkin work, uh, the value of the CRE market in the United States is about $25.7 So for anybody who... Uh, knows the value of the residential real estate market in the United States, it's about 45 trillion. So uh, commercial real estate is about 60% the size of the residential market. So there's a lot out there for the taking. Uh, very briefly, we'll go over some of the different asset types in commercial real estate. Um, and by the way, please stop me if anybody has any questions. Uh, first, obviously you have office buildings, professional administrative purposes, can also include medical offices, doctors, dentists, therapists, chiropractors, uh, things of that nature. And then these are classified into uh, class A, B, or C, or have even seen D uh, based on their location, quality, and amenities that they offer. Um, and then most of us now, we're either in an office building or a retail space, uh, depending on where our office is located. Um, so a retail space could be located inside a shopping center, mall, strip mall, or it could be a standalone building. Uh, foot traffic is a critical factor in, in retail. As you guys know, you're not gonna have a retail uh, storefront off the beaten path, or if you do, it's kind of a one-off. Uh, number three being industrial properties. Obviously this is uh, referencing warehouse, distribution centers, manufacturing facilities. Uh, it could be uh, outdoor storage. It could just be land. Uh, there's a lot of land leasing going on for tractor trailers or outdoor storage or a landscaper, you know, that needs to park his vehicles and put the mulch somewhere. Uh, I know some of us are probably struggling with that right now. Um, and then that demand gets influenced by logistics, supply chain, supply chain and the e-commerce trends. 
And that last thing there, I think the e-commerce trends is what's really been driving the industrial market. For anybody who knows or has been trying to find their client a warehouse, it's few and far between and the prices are, are astronomical. You're almost paying office pricing for warehouse. Um, and I think that's because e-commerce continues to grow. Now you can get something delivered. You can order something at 7 a.m. on Amazon. It'll be by your house by 12 p.m., which is just unbelievable. Uh, number four, you have multifamily housing. That would be apartment complexes, condominiums, and townhouses. When we say condominiums and townhouses, we're talking about the development as a whole. We're not just talking about one townhouse or one condo. You're talking about the entire project. Um, and typically, once you become five or more units, it's when it's going to be considered commercial. Um, for those, for, so for those of you that are selling, you know, four or five families, those may still fall on, onto the residential side. And then number five would be specialty properties. Um, we all have, uh, you know, gone to school. There's government buildings, farms, churches. Churches is a big one right now um, because there's been less people attending church or congregations are shrinking and not growing. A lot of these churches cannot just cannot afford to stay open. So they they have to make some decisions whether they're going to their property or their property. All right, now we're going to go over the basics of a cap rate. So a cap rate uh, just generally is a way for us to evaluate and value commercial real estate. CAP stands for the capitalization rate. It's a key metric used to evaluate the poten investment potential of commercial properties. It represents the rate of return on an investment property based on its net operating income. That's NOI relative to its purchase price. So if you noticed in there, cap rate did not make any mention of a mortgage or debt service, because when you compare a commercial property, you have to compare it like it has no mortgage, because there may be some buyers that get a mortgage, there may be some buyers that don't get a mortgage. And then the formula for cap rate, so we're not going to go too deep into math, it's a very simple division equation. The cap rate equals your net operating income divided by your purchase price. And the cap rate is always going to vary by property type, location, marking conditions, and investor preferences. Lower cap rates typically indicate lower risk, but potentially lower returns. While higher cap rates may imply higher risk, but higher potential returns. So we're going to go over a couple examples as to what might be, why a cap rate might be lower in one area and higher in another. So just a quick example of how to calculate a, a cap rate. Let's suppose an office building that we're selling has $200,000 in annual net operating income, and it is valued at three, $3 million. So essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that 200,000, divide that by 3 million, and that'll give you a decimal point. You multiply that by 100, and you get your percentage. So the cap rate for this office building would be 6.67% or 0.0667 as a decimal. So that would be the return on the investment before the mortgage, 6.67%. Uh, for, for those of you who may have clients that have been looking for commercial real estate, you may know that the commercial uh, rates right now are a little bit higher than 6.67%. I've seen seven and a quarter. I've seen eight. I've seen nine, depending on the loan type. So if I'm going to be paying 9 or 8% interest on something that's only generating me 6.67% in return, it's probably not a good investment. That means I'm losing 2% to the interest every single month. Now let's talk about some of the factors that affect your cap rate and why that, that changes. Uh, different asset types, of course, have different risk profiles and market dynamics. We just said right now industrial is hot. Well, 10 years prior, industrial wasn't so hot. There wasn't a lot of investment going on in industrial. Location, uh, cap rates can vary significantly by geographic area, with prime locations typically commanding lower cap rates. And uh, we'll go over the math again as to why a lower cap rate gives you a higher value. Market conditions, economic trends, supply and demand dynamics, and investor sentiment also influence cap rates. Uh, property condition, well-maintained properties may justify lower cap rates due to reduced risk and higher potential appreciation. And number five, lease terms. This is a big one. Long-term leases with creditworthy tenants can stabilize income and justify lower cap rates. That's a big one, especially if you have a net leased investment. 
which essentially means that the tenant is paying all the expenses for the property. The landlord doesn't have to come out of pocket for any expenses. All right, guys, so before I get into uh, some, some quick examples, the conclusion basically is that cap rate is an essential metric for an investor at, when they're looking for a commercial property. Even if they're gonna own or occupy it, they're still gonna wanna know what a cap rate is in the area. So the only way you can find out what a cap rate, what the going cap rate is in the area is to do the research. You have to look for comps, things that have sold in that area that are of the same asset type. Let's talk uh, briefly about a property located in Princeton. Princeton, beautiful town. There are some nice high, high value properties there, great schools. Princeton is probably a little lower risk profile than if you bought something in Newark, right? Princeton will command a lower cap rate, which will thus give you a higher value. If we go back to the, the slide with the math, essentially what I'm doing is if I increase that top half number here, the 200,000, I'm gonna give myself a higher cap rate, right? And if I reduce that, if I reduce that 200,000 over 3 million, my cap rate is gonna be lower. If you're a buyer, you want to try to get the highest cap rate possible. You're negotiating to get that cap rate higher because you want a higher return on investment. If you are a seller, you want a, as low a cap rate as possible because that is going to bring up the value of your property. And then other than that, I think the bottom line is that there is a lot of uh, potential out there in commercial real estate. For those that don't know, commissions oh, sometimes can be greater. They can be smaller. Hey, Leo, good morning. Um, good morning. And it, essentially what you need to be thinking about with commercial real estate is how can I get my investor or my owner user the return that they're looking for based on the asset type that they're, they're looking to buy. There's a lot of opportunity out there. And like, for example, the office sector, there's a lot of vacant properties in office. If you represent a tenant on an office lease, you may get a 5% fee based on the gross rental amount for an office lease. Most people don't realize that the fees um, in commercial real estate can be higher. Same goes for industrial. Plus you can get paid on renewals on a lot of these properties. So you may sign a five-year lease with a five-year renewal option. Well, guess what? When that lease comes up for renewal, you'll get paid again if it's written that way in your commission agreement with the landlord's broker. It's very common in commercial real estate to have something called an override where you have another broker that brings you a client, a buyer, a tenant, whatever it may be, and your commission may be X amount higher than what you originally signed for because there's another broker involved. So I think this is very poignant for our conversation today about, about NAR because this is kind of how it's been, been in commercial real estate from day one is you always have to negotiate your commission. There's no MLS for commercial real estate or only commercial real estate, I should only commercial real estate properties, I should say. There was never a, a co-broke section, a buyer broker section. You okay. always have to make that inquiry. There's a lot of opportunity out there in commercial real estate, guys. Um, for those who don't know, if you have questions, certainly reach out to your manager, someone you know in your office that does commercial real estate. Um, I'll put my information in the chat below so you can always reach out to me because guys don't forget this article 11 in the code of ethics. It's very important that you at least have some baseline of, of uh, uh, experience in dealing with commercial property. So I do think it's very important um, for us to, to consider that. Oh, here we go. Okay. So there's the code of ethics again, guys. So on the slide that uh, describes each of the different types of commercial real estate, did you say that anything that's more than a, oh, oh well, we're done. I'm here. We're here, friend. Okay. Did you say that anything that's more than a four family would fall under the commercial platform? Like if it's five residential units or six residential units, we're considering that under the commercial platform? Yeah, I would say, Fran, anything that's more than five residential units would be considered now in your commercial multifamily sector. Okay. 
Okay. I don't know. I don't know why I went out of Zoom. I'm on post attendee Zoom. I don't really know what. Oh, here we go. Let's see if I could get back in. There we go. I'm back. So um, I just wanted to to clarify that. And uh, Adona is uh, in Hoboken working with the manager there for a few minutes. So did anybody else have questions? And Marinelli, please keep Patrick as the host for right now. Does anyone else have questions or Pat, did, did you put in the chat your email so they can reach out to you? Yeah, I'll make sure I do that for everyone. I'll put my info in the chat so you can call me, text me, email me anytime. Um, I'd love to see our company get some more commercial listings. I'd be happy to, to go to listing appointments with you guys or just advise you. Um, remember that our license is good for the whole state. But we've done listings down in Mantaloking. We've done listings even further south. We've done stuff, you know, way south of where we are here, as well as west, the southwest. Um, if it's the right property, it's probably worth the trip. Um, so I would just uh, recommend also if anybody wants to do some additional education for commercial real estate, there's tons of courses out there. I right now am in process of getting my CCIM which is essentially like a master's of commercial real estate. It's four parts, costs about 10 grand. You have to do like a thesis. You have to present to their board. So it's uh, it's a lot, but it's, it's a great designation to have. Um, and that will set you apart, I think, from your competition. I also would recommend something called SIOR, which is the Society of Industrial and Office Representatives. Uh, that's another very highly coveted designation that takes quite a few years to get. Um, but there are some basic courses that REMAX offers. Um, anybody who has attended R4 or, um, you know, has heard of Mark Holsey, he's been a, a REMAX commercial guy for many, many years. Um, I've taken his course several times now, and I always learn something new. Um, it's good for anybody. It's good for somebody who's never done uh, commercial real estate. It's good for someone who does commercial real estate every day like myself. Um, so I would recommend that. That's actually in Max Center. Um, so I believe it's called Intro to Commercial Real Estate with Mark Holsey, but I'll see if I can send that link to Edona so it can be shared. Yeah. So I think that, uh, go ahead, Fran. No, I think this is a great overview of you know, letting everyone know what's involved and uh, the steps that, you know, you need and how aware you need to be, especially when it comes to the code of ethics. And um, I certainly think that, you know, you gave everyone a nice overview, enough to tempt them to decide if they want to venture out more or not, and uh, to pick it up and do it, you know, themselves. But if you could please put your contact in the chat before uh, we get time data signed out of this because people won't have a chance to write it down and I'm afraid that they're not going to get it. Um, are there any other questions out there? Everybody, anyone else have questions? Everybody can see Patrick's number 201-400-5344. You can text him and his email is patrick at chopperrussoteam.com. Um, if Patrick, is there anything else you want to add? And then I'm going to just make an announcement about next week and the, uh, topic. So anything else you need to put out there for everyone? No, other than thank you very much to Edona and Fran, obviously Fran, thanks for the housekeeping stuff. I'd be happy to present to any of your thank offices you. if you guys have questions. So thank you everybody. Okay. Thank for those you. of us that are still on, just want to tell you, um, Edona and I, are definitely going down to the uh, state meeting on Thursday regarding all the changes that are coming forward with the Real Estate Consumer Enhancement Act that was passed, signed by Governor Murphy July 11th and going into effect August 1st. Uh, we have a whole lot of questions um, you know, that we need to ask. Uh, there is a great source online if you're looking for some answers to questions and that would be uh, to go to NewJerseyRealtor.com, sign in, go to the tab for membership, and then if you scroll down to antitrust lawsuit and then keep scrolling, there are a ton of questions that people have already submitted and answers to those questions. This is a different area than the legal library. Certainly, if you have any 
uh, questions that you want us to try to ask tomorrow. We're going in person to see if we can get those answers. My um, email is uh, movingwithfran at gmail.com. And um, my self, and I'm going to put that in the chat uh, in case anyone has anything. It, this is a, a, a like a constantly changing, um, trying not changing, but trying to get definitive answers on how the law is going to work. Um, our plan is to do uh, to do the Zoom next Tuesday. We were going to do dot loop, but we will be doing the New Jersey law as it's being implemented. Um, I'm not quite sure if Friday Zoom will also pick up on that for New Jersey because Rob, that's Rob Zoom Zoom on Friday. Not sure if that will be specific overview of the NAR settlement. But for those of us here in New Jersey, we're a little more affected on the time constraint uh, being it August 1st for a lot of the changes. Um, over the weekend, I did see some information come out from how Hudson County is going to handle their MLS. I saw something come out from Monmouth. I still, if anyone on this call seen anything come out from Garden State and how they're handling it? Because I haven't seen anything. Um, okay, so we're going to wait and see on that. New Jersey MLS, they have it down exactly what they're doing. And uh, we're just going to have to keep you informed as we become informed. Please, if you have any specific questions about commercial real estate, email Patrick. If you have any questions you would like me to ask regarding the New Jersey law and how it takes effect for August 1st, you can either email me or Adona, and we'd be more than happy to do that to try to get those questions answered for you, okay? Anything else? If not, don't wanna say we can wrap it up early and we'll be finished. Okay, have a great day, everyone. And uh, hang in there. We're all gonna work through everything together. All right, bye-bye. Thanks, bye everyone. Thank you, have a great day.